this. When you get 80 plus percent of the public realizing presidents are puppets bought and paid for, and that the one guy who knows that the Federal Reserve is the enemy of the Republic and is willing to fight it, who has a chance to be president, who's real, is being demonized and attacked. When that starts happening, you start getting Dylan Radigan and all these others criticizing the Federal Reserve. And even Fox News starts allowing Glenn Beck to do it for a time or Judge Napolitano to do it or Lou Dobbs to do it because that's wildly popular. For decades, didn't exist, isn't fed, uh, you know, uh, isn't private, it is federal. You're crazy if you talk about it. Oh, you're kooks. But remember three years ago, whenever uh, Dick Morris got up with um, Sean Hannity and said, well, the people that thought that, that, that a world government was forming that would get rid of U.S. sovereignty run by a banking cartel, they had been crazy conspiracy theorists, but now they're right. And then that was the signal by one of their top political analysts that, look, we've lost this game of denying that it exists. Now we've got to act like we're going to fight it. And Rick Perry, three years ago, went from supporting the Federal Reserve to talking bad about it and uh, you know, basically did a 180 from the way he'd actually been. Suddenly he introduced legislation to end sanctuary cities, but quietly killed it himself behind the scenes. Now it's come out he supported sanctuary cities and in-state tuition for illegals, something other American citizens don't get. Now all of this is destroying him. And so the Fed is analyzing media, mainly mainstream with this, but also Internet, to target people, to attack people. But more importantly, it's getting so popular to bash the, to, to bash the Fed that mainline people are starting to do it. They need to keep tabs on that so they can put pressure through the executives. See, the Federal Reserve realizes they're on fire right now and going down. All of us should be very, very excited right now. Gardasil is one of the biggest national issues. The vast majority of people, upwards of 90% in national polls I've seen, think that it's a horrible idea to take it and know that it's wrong that Perry lied and said it was the law to take it. And the Federal Reserve is incredibly unpopular. The actual ruling elite are now being targeted. We're not just debating their front men. They want you to think the buck stops with the president. They want you to think the power structure stops there. Because if you ever start looking at the oligarchs that run this country, their system is over, as Zbigniew Brzezinski said last year. Once the real governing class is identified, and once it's shown that they're a pack of criminals, waging war against the family, against the free market, and trying to set up a form of neo-colonialistic collectivist uh, grids with their fascist system on top of it, it's over for them. And so what is uh, Infowars.com reporting? What is Fox News reporting? What is the Miami Herald reporting? What is the Raw Story reporting? Again, I have a pretty good political understanding. And that's why I've been saying we're going to see the fall of Rick Perry. I told you we'd see the fall of Rick Perry before he even announced. I told you that we would see Rick Perry propped up by the mainstream media. I told you you would see Rick Perry um, basically being shoved out there and sold as the second coming of Ronald Reagan. I told you he would break his pledge not to run. I have told you exactly what was going to happen all along. And I also said in the last few months that if we go after Perry on the open borders, on the sanctuary cities, on the in-state tuition, on the Vicente Fox awards that Vicente Fox gave him, now that video is resurfaced to myself and others confronting Perry and uh, Fox, shutting down their press conference, that's now getting a lot of attention. It's up at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com from 2003 that we could bring Rick Perry down. And I was listening to talk radio this morning, San Antonio, Austin, and Dallas. Caller after caller going, I didn't know he supported sanctuary cities. I didn't know he worked for Al Gore. I didn't know he supported Hillary Care. I didn't know he went to Bilderberg Group. I didn't know. 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 
Now, this is very elementary, and I want you to listen to me very carefully. I know you know this. But we got to get this out to everybody right now through Facebook, through Twitter. You've got to get the Infowars.com article Kurt Nemo's written and get it out to everybody you know. And we're going to give you that headline here in just a moment. Uh, Ron Paul is half a step from first place. Kurt Nemo and Alex Jones. Kurt and I put the, this article together this morning. It's got the facts there for you. Please get it out to everyone you know. Now, here's the elementary fact. Ron Paul is undisputedly in third place. If you put together all the straw polls and money raising and the rest of it, second place, maybe even first. But let's just say he is in third like he has said. You've got two guys who both support socialist government health care, who both supported carbon taxes, who both supported giant highway grabs to Centra of Spain, who both support forced inoculation, and who both have been supported by Al Gore. Al Gore's praised both of them. These guys are phony. They became Tea Party talkers when it became cool, but only to get elected. And Perry, you've heard him. He says, it's, you don't have a big heart. You're cold-blooded if you don't want to give illegals in-state tuition. Well, somebody from New York who comes to Texas doesn't get it. Somebody from Oklahoma doesn't. That's a $91,000 value on average Dallas Morning News is reporting. 81% of the jobs formed in the last five years in Texas. That's Dallas Morning News as well. State Commission admits 81% are not citizens. They're immigrants, and 93% of that 81% are illegal aliens. Okay? So, the record, now this is the key, I'm going to say it right now, listen to me carefully, because I love to give facts and statistics, but here's the simple key. The elites can only give you another establishment candidate if we the people don't get the word out. All right, I'm going to go to break and come back with the big key. And again, this key is simple, but I want everybody to pay attention to it and to listen to me very, very carefully. Then I'll get to other news in your phone calls. I've got a video clip, Fox News panel, Perry campaign, quote, near total collapse. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Okay, here's the big, ultra simple point that needs to be gotten out there. And it is enshrined in the article by Kurt Nemo and Alex Jones at Infowars.com. Ron Paul is half a step from first place. And why did I uh, go to that headline? Well, I watched this Fox News clip this morning. I hadn't seen it until this morning, but they said it yesterday uh, on Fox News Sunday. Fox News panel, Perry campaign near total collapse. And if you go to the quote, uh, Britt Hume said that he is half a step away from total collapse. Now, what does half a step towards total collapse for Rick Perry mean for Ron Paul? We've seen Rick Perry surge to number one when he said abolish the Federal Reserve. They're treasonous. They're treacherous. You know, I want to battle the new world order. Suddenly, that's not bad to talk like that, as Limbaugh has always said with his kook detector. Now it was good, and Limbaugh said it was good, and, and Glenn Beck said it was good, and the Republican establishment was like, yay! So Rick Perry tried to become Ron Paul, surged to number one in every major poll, and then for a month, we, that is those of us that know the truth, put out his real record. And when he got called on his record, you were for sanctuary cities? You were for in-state tuition? He said, yeah, you betcha. And you don't have a heart if you aren't. Really, if you go down to Mexico and ask for free tuition, you'll just get arrested. I mean, they don't have illegals in their school system, period. Mexico has the most draconian immigration laws in this hemisphere. Don't believe me, just type in Mexico admits most draconian or strongest immigration laws. I mean, you get hard labor in a prison six months to one year. You get beaten if you're lucky. You, uh, 
there's only certain areas of Mexico that foreigners can even buy land. And a lot of that's taken by the government. So what, Mexico doesn't have a heart? Oh, I forgot, the Southwest is Mexico, and that's taught in Mexico schools. I mean, let's just be honest about this, that we're a bankrupt country. And in Texas, they take our tax money to pay for the in-state school system. So when you get in-state tuition, it's about half what it is if you're from Oklahoma or Arkansas or Mississippi or Louisiana or not just bordering states, any state. If you're a Hispanic, black, white, if you're an American, you try to come to Texas to go to UT or any other state school, you're going to pay roughly double. Or what the Dallas Morning News breaks down, $91,000 more for a four-year degree. Oh, what about having a heart for other people? Well, see, Texans paid for that. Side issue, though. Side issue. George Bush was for open borders. NAFTA and GATT doesn't help Mexico, doesn't help us. Lowers all of our wages. Mexican wages go down. U.S. wages go down. If Mexico wouldn't have had the U.S. to dump 30 million people in, they would have had a real revolution. By the way, I saw the new numbers this morning. And I even heard local Fox cover it. But I didn't even know this. They're now reporting 40 thousand dead in the last four years so i have a tendency to quote old numbers you know thirty thousand it's now forty thousand dead in drug war on the u.s mexico border forty thousand ladies and gentlemen vietnam in a decade was fifty eight thousand forty thousand and they actually called it a war on the news and if you watch the video of myself seven eight years ago confronting vicente fox and Rick Perry, there's Perry, they're getting an award from Fox. Fox drives by with like 30 motorcycles or more and all these other police cars, like, like he was the president of the planet, pulls up in front of the governor's mansion, rolls down his window, gives us a dirty look. He had like green color to his face, like a, like a vampire in the, in the nighttime light. He's like six feet away. He rolled the window down and gave me a look that actually made me shudder. I mean, I'll, I'll admit it. It was like, Ugh. I've never had a leader actually make me shudder. He rolled the window down. It was like, he was like green, like some vampire and smiled at us with just pure evil. Everybody was like, whoo, wasn't just me. Everybody was like, ah, we have to dig through that video. Uh, the guy that runs our YouTube channel actually found it in uh, the prisonplanet.tv archives. It's PrisonPlanet.tv's been around that long. And uh, I know if we find that, that, that original video somewhere around here, if we blew it up, because it was shot digitally, you, you, I know you can barely see his face in the footage, um, but it looks not too good on YouTube. It's up on PrisonPlanet.tv, like I said. And then they pull around and, and went down there, and I went and bullhorned them while they had their press conference. And the cops come up and were going to arrest me. And I said, go ahead, but you know you've lost personal lawsuits. A whole bunch of them right here in Austin just a few years ago. Uh, back in 2000, they had, so that was a few years ago in 2003. And the cops backed off, did their job, didn't violate the First Amendment. So I was able to shut their press conference down. And we have those newscasts where you can hear me talking over them <laughs> from about 70 yards away from the street, bullhorning up towards the press conference. So they just shut the press conference down. All right, now I'm digressing. You tuned in. I said I was going to get to the key, simple point. And because I have a problem. I have trouble giving sound bites. I have trouble uh, just making things simple. I, I, I see detail. I see complex connections. I want to go through it all. I literally just pretty much start, I turn the microphone on and just start spilling out information. Here's the big news flash. Ron Paul is half a step from first place. Ron Paul is half a step from first place. Why? Because if you expose Rick Perry's record, he will be politically destroyed for the nightmare, slimy, globalist, big government politician he is. For the poser, for the political chameleon he is, and Ron Paul, who's number three, will become number two. If you destroy Mitt Romney, who is exactly the same, sanctuary cities, in-state tuition for illegals, wrote Obamacare on record, supports carbon taxes, is praised by Al Gore, and it goes on and on. 
if you use his record against him, it is like pouring gasoline on the ground and throwing a match in it. It's going to explode. He will burn down. Both of these guys are so weak and so pathetic, all we've got to do is crush them. <clears throat> now, this is a big test for the old dying dinosaur media. I'm going to get to that in a moment. Ron Paul is already the second biggest earner. Ron Paul is winning most of the straw polls and in scientific polls is number two or number three. So we destroy Rick Perry, we destroy Mitt Romney with their records, and it is Ron Paul. Now they're going to try to bring in Chris Christie and hope you don't look at his carbon tax record. Oh, you didn't know that about him? Or his gun grabbing? Oh, he did some austerity and shut down some government projects? whoop de doo What about corporate welfare? What about supporting bailouts? They hope that you don't find out about Jabba the Hutt. They'll try to bring him in. Okay, it'll take him a few months to figure out him. Huh. And then if that doesn't work, they'll throw in some more and say, oh, they're the new leader. But see, cycles have sped up now. It doesn't take five years to figure out a politician's a, 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 a dirty, two-faced liar. People find out in months now we need to make it weeks. And I'll tell you, one reason Rick Perry has been exposed is the Drudge Report. It's bigger than the New York Times and Facebook and, and uh, Twitter combined. They've had big actuaries uh, out over and over again this year proving it. Number one news driver in the world. And he has been linking to the Tea Party sites that have Rick Perry supporting carbon taxes and Al Gore and, and uh, government-run health care and the rest of it. And he's been linking to stuff about Mitt Romney. Not as much because people haven't been getting out as much on Mitt Romney. But Infowars.com, DrudgeReport.com, these are big sites that are able to actually get something on the agenda past the mainstream corporate whore media. And I will assure you, this, just, this proves the Drudge Report is totally independent because if he was part of the Republican Party, uh, structure, he would not be destroying Rick Perry. He would not be getting ready to destroy Mitt Romney. And people ought to be praying for Matt Drudge, because I can tell you right now, uh, Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com together are huge. But nothing compared to Drudge Report. You add my YouTube videos, the radio show, all of it, we've probably got total person reach, 70% of the audience of, of a Matt Drudge. But Matt Drudge is just articles. It's just agenda. He can set the agenda. That's something we're not, we're 20% of drudge in that department. Okay, n n Facebook's 20, 30%. I mean, it's all fractured, a bunch of people scurrying around, even though overall it's much bigger overall than drudge. Drudge is like a Death Star particle beam of focused energy. And that's the most important thing in this world is to be able to break through that electronic Berlin Wall and actually put something on the plate, on the agenda, on the menu that the establishment doesn't want there. <clears throat> so I've said it a lot of different ways, but I'm going to say it to you this way. Ron Paul is in third place, no debate. In many respects, he's in first place in the real world. Let's just say he's in third, as he said. That's conservative. If we destroy Mitt Romney and Rick Perry with their record... And they deserve it and stop being naive and don't buy into the latest version of establishment Ken doll. We've already had Obama. Now we've got the two new Ken dolls on the Republican side. It's over for them. And they'll try every dirty trick against Ron Paul. Uh, they'll throw everything at him. So what? So what if it's a rigged game? We still take the field and show it's a rigged game. I went and saw a great movie. I know it won um, Sundance Film Festival and some others, but I, I went and saw Cinna about the Formula One race car driver, because uh, of all the sports out there, race car driving is gladiatorial, people die. It's all about, you know, the, the equipment and, and, and the individual, and there's the politics. And I don't remember why I brought up that movie now. I had an analogy about Ron Paul I wanted to bring up. Oh, yeah. Even though Formula One got caught rigging things and letting cars have computers when he couldn't because they got jealous of him beating all their champions, and even though he ended up getting killed in the end, they recognized him as the best Formula One driver ever. 
and he would go out even when they were cheating him and still, still sometimes lose, but sometimes beat them, and that's what made him even the greater champion. You don't, just because something's rigged, not get on the field. You have to get on the field to show that it's rigged. I don't know how else I'm supposed to explain this to people, ladies and gentlemen. I took my wife to see that. It's an excellent movie. Just because it's, it's, it's about the whole system against one guy and rising to another level and still going out and doing it even though you know you're being cheated and sometimes losing and sometimes winning, but every time winning because you didn't give up. Winners never quit and quitters never win. Ron Paul got a fraction of the support three and a half years ago he's getting now. He is destroying the globalists. The Federal Reserve is running around like a chicken with its head cut off, sending the army out to spy on Ron Paul events, having the feds put out memos to police saying Ron Paul supporters are violent and dangerous. You know they're getting ready to stage terror attacks and blame it on real Americans. And you're like, well, oh my gosh, they're going to stage stuff and blame it on us. And we're going to expose them. We know their game plan. So we're out ahead of it. Let them. I'm sorry for those they're going to kill. But, you know, they're going to do what they're going to do. It's like Kurt Haskell, the lawyer that saw the feds get the, the underwear bomber on the plane. For a month and a half, the media said he was wrong. And it came out he was telling the truth. The government had to admit it. And I said to him, are you worried about getting killed? And he said, they can only kill me once. I'm committed. That's the end of it. Don't you get it? We're only fighting other men here. And, and see, they've got this arrogance where they sit up there and say, too bad Ron Paul can't win. Too bad it's Rick Perry or Mitt Romney and Time Magazine and Newsweek put them on the cover and say the race is between them and try to frame the debate and control your mind. We're just going to ignore them and let them discredit themselves further. I mean, I've got articles here, and I didn't just believe the campaign spot uh, breakdown of this. I actually went and watched this and confirmed it for myself and got the same numbers. Mitt Romney in the last debate was given 12.9 minutes, 12 minutes, 9 seconds. Perry, 11 minutes, 10 seconds. And by the way, in all the other debates, it's, it's about the same. It's all scripted. There's a talking point no matter who puts it on, Fox, Google, NBC, New York, you know, it's all scripted. Romney, Perry, Huntsman, Santorum, Kane, Bachman, Genrich, Ron Paul, Johnson. Total talk time, amount of questions, same. And you go through all of these numbers, and it's roughly the same. It's always Ron Paul at the end. Or, and I want to get Johnson back on about this, by the way. I want to get Gary Johnson back on, foreign New Mexico governor. So this is about showing how they've rigged it. I mean, Ron Paul won the last debate on Fox. He won it. In, in their IP address, only vote once system, he had right at just below double. In other polls, he's gotten more than double. What Mitt Romney got in Fox News just pulled the poll. Just pulled the poll. Just pulled the poll. I mean, I mean, what does that say they think about you? And then said Mitt Romney won. And, you know, why did Herman Cain win? Herman Cain won because he spent two years in Florida... I heard him talk about it on Neil Boards the day of the debate. They were hearing Neil Boards here locally at night. He spent two years there ahead of time getting to know personally all the main people that would be voting in a straw poll. And so he was seen as the native son, the guy that spent the most time. And it is a big state. And you notice Perry didn't win and Mitt Romney didn't win. And that is a rebuking of what is seen as establishment candidates. We come back, I'm gonna play this Fox News clip. Fox News panel, Perry campaign near total collapse. And Mitt Romney is gonna collapse just as soon as we continue to duplicate what we've done to Perry to him. They have the exact same record. And it's even better. Perry is now desperately attacking Romney with his government health care model, but we can then turn that back around on different angles to how they steal these straw polls. When the straw poll is open to the general public and has a low price, Ron Paul wins.
I should uh, add that the straw poll cost 125, excuse me, $175 bribe. This is from Lou Rockwell, from a participant in the Florida straw poll. And I looked this up last night and confirmed it. In order to vote in the thing, you had to pay a bribe of 175 to the War Party of Florida. I did it, but I feel like a sucker now because the money could have gone to Ron Paul campaign, but instead will be spent to fight Ron Paul. That's another thing. The Republican Party basically wants to use Herman Cain. That's why he's been put in there. Former Federal Reserve operative, big pro-torture, pro-war globalist, who, by the way, is going to give you a national sales tax on top of the income tax. I heard Neil Bortz Friday on the hot seat. I thought she was saying we were going to have a sales tax and no more income tax. Well, Herman Cain knows we need to phase one out with the other on top of it. I told you. I've known this for 15 years. The globalists all over the world bring in sales taxes this way. You'll end up with both. But I know it's what you want, so you're going to get it. You like to be hurt? You will. And so the Republican Party in Florida uh, hates Ron Paul. Uh, they got the $175. The Republican insiders went and bought the tickets, and they put Herman Cain in there. Now, some of the people also were just Herman Cain supporters and went in there and voted for him. And Herman Cain's a likable guy. He's a good little corporate shyster. He'll take good care of you. And he also, you know, survived cancer, so he likes to play on those heartstrings all day. Uh, I want to go ahead and go to this video clip, though, because I told you Rick Perry was going to run, and I told you he could be destroyed. Why else would he go to a national TV host and grab him and say, I'm afraid of Ron Paul and Alex Jones, because you know we know who you are. We're from Texas, buddy boy. We have been sitting here watching you since you were land commissioner. And what, when, what makes it worse, Perry, is that I talked to another former politician and businessman who was friends with you and who you played golf with and lifted weights with for many years who told me you used to actually be anti-New World Order and know all about this stuff. That makes you even worse. You used your knowledge of this information to go join it. That's sick. Just You are just as bad as former fellow reserve head Greenspan who wrote books against the New World Order in the 60s and 70s. I mean, he co-authored one with Harry Brown talking about getting rid of the private fellow reserve. All right, let's go ahead and go to this quick clip. This is from Fox Sunday. Brett Hume talking about Rick Perry is one half step from total destruction. Here it is. What Americans are looking for in the slickest candidate they're looking for an authentic principled leader GOP presidential frontrunner Rick Perry making the argument his less than stellar debate performance this week shouldn't take away from his candidacy but the Florida straw poll Saturday showed it apparently did in a big upset businessman Herman Cain trounced the field with 37 percent the Texas governor was a distant second with 15 percent, while Mitt Romney, who didn't campaign for the straw poll, came in third. And you can see the rest down the line. Well, Britt, how do you read the straw poll? Was it a vote for Kane, a vote for Perry, or a statement, please let somebody else get in this race? Well, you can read it any of those three ways, it seems to me. They're all, I mean, Perry really did throw up all over himself in the debate <laughs> at a time when he needed to raise his game. And he not only, I mean, he... he he did worse, it seems to me, than he had done in previous debates. Romney was strong, as he has been lately. He has clearly raised his game in, re in reaction to the emergence of Perry. It's been good for Romney in a way that one might not have predicted. Uh, Michelle Bachman, seemed, she felt, what, she was dead last with some tiny fright. Look, Herman Cain was there. He tried hard in this. He gave a stemwinder speech. He's a marvelous stump speaker. Um, it seems to me he gets a moment out of this, but I can't imagine that it's going to All right, Brett Hume, total collapse. Watch the full video clip at Infowars.com. from Fox News Sunday. Perry campaign near total collapse. Now, what did I say yesterday? The rise and fall of Rick Perry. You see, it's such a hoax that we would have this anti-free market, pro-globalist, pro-forced inoculation, pro-open border individual up there and when he starts actually defending his policies, it's over. But it's the same thing with Mitt Romney. So if they're number one and number two, and Ron Paul's number three, this shows that voters will not buy into Perry or Romney. We can destroy them.
if you simply decide Ron Paul can win and realize he's in third place and that we must politically destroy these people, Ron Paul wins. Let's go ahead and go to the clip. What Americans are looking for isn't the slickest candidate. They're looking for an authentic, principled leader. GOP presidential frontrunner Rick Perry making the argument his less than stellar debate performance this week shouldn't take away from his candidacy. But the Florida straw poll Saturday showed it apparently did. In a big upset, businessman Herman Cain trounced the field with 37 percent. The Texas governor was a distant second with 15 percent, while Mitt Romney, who didn't campaign for the straw poll, came in third. And you can see the rest down the line as well. Brett, how do you read the straw poll? Was it a vote for Kane, a vote for Perry, or a statement, please let somebody else get in this race? Well, you can read it any of those three ways, it seems to me. They're all, I mean, Perry really did throw up all over himself in the debate <laughs> at a time when he needed to raise his game. And he now, I mean, he, he, he did worse, it seems to me, than he had done in previous debates. Romney was strong, as he has been lately. He has clearly raised his game in, re in reaction to the emergence of Perry. It's been good for Romney in a way that one might not have predicted. Uh, Michelle Bachman seemed, she felt, what, she was dead last with some tiny fright. Her, look, Herman Cain was there. He tried hard in this. He gave a stemwinder speech. He's a marvelous stump speaker. Um, it seems to me he gets a moment out of this, but I can't imagine that it's going to last very long. And uh, Perry is about, you know, one half a step away from t almost total collapse as a candidate. Hey, B. I think the delegates in Florida, this is a much more closed um, straw poll than the one in Ames. Um, and, and these are discerning voters, uh, very loyal Republicans. They've been paying attention to this process all along. I think it was a real slap um, uh, towards Perry and Mitt Romney. And what you really got a sense when I spoke to Republicans on Friday, um, as many as I could after the debate, the sense was not only that Perry had given a dismal performance, but, and of course Romney had won, but that they don't like their choices at all. That in the end, they don't, it, just because Romney's been a good debater, they're not enthusiastic about him. And you still see, according to people who watch these numbers, about 50% of donors, you know, on the sidelines and people, heavy hitters, not ready to commit to either of them. Bill, you wrote a special editorial for the Weekly Standard after the Fox-Google debate, and, and let's put it up on the screen. It was fairly striking. Yikes! That was the one-word headline, and about Rick Perry, you wrote this. No front-runner in a presidential field has ever, we imagine, had as weak a showing as Rick Perry. It was close to a disqualifying okay. two hours for him. About the rest of the field, you wrote this. None of the... Now, what's also what's happening is some of the neocons would rather have Mitt Romney than Rick Perry. So they're kind of seizing on this to knock him down. But the moral of the story is... We have cyanide politically for both these men. And you need to go to Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com and get the articles that we've written, the articles that we've put together on this, uh, the headline story that Kurt Nimmo and I uh, did. In fact, I'm looking for it uh, here about how Ron Paul is one half step from first place. Facebook, Twitter, everywhere. Get it out to everybody you know because it points out what's really happening.